And this brings me to our first guest, um, who was born in Athens and brought up in Munich. He is a member of the American Society of Cinematographers and has moved to America in the 1980s. He has worked on numerous movies, including Walk the Line, which won him the Golden Frog here at Camera Image. He's collaborated with Alexander Payne on the film Sideways, The Descendants, and Nebraska. And that was shot with the Alexa and earned him an Oscar nomination, as well as the BSC Best Cinematography Award. And for George Clooney, he's shot The Ides of March and The Monuments Men. Please welcome Faden Papa Michael. Faden. I'll set the timer. We have about eight minutes to do this, you know, really, really quick interview. We'll do the story of your life in eight minutes, Faden. All right. Sorry? Okay? All right. Um, Hello. So thank you for coming. In the background, we have um, two commercials you shot. And I'm, I'm very curious. I remember a couple of years ago, almost nobody was using Airy Raw on commercials, but you shot these on Airy Raw. I'm curious if you could just briefly talk about why you did that. Uh, well, I've actually only shot, I've never shot the Alexa, not Airy Raw, so um, I, I, I started using it on features, and um, and therefore when, when, when I started using it on commercials, uh, it was just the, the, the natural thing for me to do. I mean, I had originally um, tested the Alexa, but only under you know, compared to film, not really to other digital cameras, and, and then only really in Airy Raw, so that, that's, how, how that's, only, that's the only way I'm film? familiar with it. How did it compare to film? What, what did you find? Compared to film? Yeah, Alexa. Well, you know, I, I, I tested it pretty early on, the very first Alexa, and um, I, I did big projections, and we did a film out, actually, we, we um, did the DI, and then, um, this was for Ides of March, actually, and then, um, and then we did film out at the time, um, and I, I saw it projected on film back then because there, there was still film projection for distribution. Um, so, and I found it to be very, very, I mean, for me, so similar, um, especially uh, uh, with the film out that uh, Actually, I decided to buy the very first Alexa because I go, this is a camera, no matter really what happens with the future of uh, digital cinematography, this is a camera that I always feel like I can, you know, use and, and shoot on, on movies. And, and I don't actually um, really want sort of the, the image quality or the resolution of the sharpness to, to improve really beyond that. So. Um, and, and uh, because I like the film look, I mean, I've shot, you know, obviously recent movies on, on Alexa and, and I'm happy with it, but mostly because I feel like it feels like m my film stock that I was um, accustomed to, to working with. And, uh, and I, I do think there's a little bit of two things going on where, you know, everybody's sort of increasing the, you know, I, all the, the image capturing, and, and I do think the cinematographers are sort of almost wanting to hold back, and that's why there's this uh, big, um, you know, uh, trend coming now with the vintage lenses and so certain looks, you know, so. Um, but like on Nebraska, obviously, that, that's a black and white film that we were going for a film look and, and uh, you know, was captured on Airy Raw. But we did add uh, film grain, and we did, uh, you know, use older lenses. And but so I, I like the I like the camera, and I like raw because it gives me, you know, the the greatest range and the most possibility to achieve the look I want in the DI. And and uh, and on commercials we use it because actually, you know, it allows us um, visual effects usually demands it. But now, that especially with the XT, where it's integrated, the codex is integrated, and I can record. Uh, it makes it user-friendly and compact enough where I can use it on commercials as well. And, um, do, do you always add film grain? Uh, there's been a bunch of discussions recently uh, about adding film grain or not adding film grain and when it's appropriate, when it's well, not appropriate. Well, you know, I, I found a way to work the camera where it gives me the look I want, which it, it, in my particular case, on Nebraska, of course, we wanted a film look, 
Uh, the reason we didn't shoot black and white stock was because uh, Paramount, the studio, also uh, required and requested from us to have a, a color version, which actually exists and is being aired occasionally. Um, it's not, not even that bad in color. Um, but, you know, so we, we, I had to, you know, generate it in, in color. And, uh, but, you know, the look we were going for were, were 70s films like uh, Last Picture Show or Paper Moon. And I actually did film projections of, of those films and, and um, uh, it did sort of A-B projection and, and, and tried to simulate uh, sort of the amount of grain structure. Because people actually said, well, you know, you're putting, I can tell you're putting a lot of grain on and it looks really, you know, too much at times. But people forget how grainy those black and white, you know, if you project a black and white film and... And, you know, I walked up close to the projector and I, I really felt like, you know, I had the, the quality very closely matched and, and very hard to distinguish, especially since, you know, we have, you know, eventually it just goes out on a DCP and, you know, we're dealing with a digital projection. But, you know, uh, while I was doing my DI, we were film projecting with film and then uh, digitally projecting our, our master and, and uh, approximating that. And uh, Haskell Wexler did call me at one point, and he asked me what film stock I shot so, uh, in Nebraska. So I was. I feel, it's I a great compliment. A good, a good test to pass, you know. But, um, now, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, and I just want to keep saying, you know, I'm not really a very technical person when it comes to all this uh, digital, uh, but I do just do my own test before I start a project. And, and, and uh, you know, I find a way to, to achieve the look I want and that I, I am able to get with the area raw. And on Monuments Man, I, I mean, I shot film and, uh, and digital. And with my colorist, Skip, who also did Nebraska, you know, of course, we, we matched the two formats. So I did add grain in that case also. But I do feel uh, that it helps uh, because I do like, I just like some texture. And I go to a lot of film festivals and I was... Uh, just at another European film festival, which basically every movie I saw was shot digitally and it was projected digitally. And I do feel um, I, I, you can accomplish a very cinematic look with this camera, but, and I'll talk about it more in the lighting seminar tomorrow, but it's, 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 a, it's a different process and I think it's about taking light away and I think, uh, you know, there's a way to get it, but it's... Uh, it's a, it's a little different than working on film, and, and you know, I, I light off a monitor, actually, and no longer by eye, because the camera, you know, I will light a scene and uh, by eye the way I used to, and then I will go to the monitor and it will just be way too much light, so, you know, it's actually, I have to work, you know, it's still a creative process, it's still, um, um, you lighting by eye, but it actually I have to do it off, off a monitor, which usually has my LUT on it. And, uh, you know, for, for example, in Nebraska, I work exclusively in black and white on the monitor and all that. So, and has the right contrast that I'm ultimately going for. And, and, and therefore, I use that as my new lighting tool. Now, did I hear you right? You were saying Nebraska, which I understand is black and white was actually transmitted at some point broadcast in color. I mean, we're, we're kind of out of time, but I'd be very curious if you could tell us how that happened. Well, you know, well, because Paramount, you know, they said we, we need to deliver the color version. We were always requiring, uh, asking who, who, is, who was going to need this color version, and we were, it was never very clear, but they do have a cable network that's called Epix, I think, and they did air it, like, on a Sunday. At 7, they aired it in black and white, and at, nine, at 10, they aired it in color. Um, so, uh, but, uh, you know, certain syndicated television, HBO, we were told, doesn't show black and white. And I go, oh, you guys don't show Raging Bull or uh, Manhattan or, you know, but uh, I think once a film found an identity as a black and white film, uh, then actually Paramount did support it and did uh, come around to And you did color correction for the... The color? Uh, we did. Uh, I, I actually spent, you know, you have a limited time in a DI room. I had uh, 80 hours and I used all that time on my black and white. And then I said to Skip, uh, uh, you know, I walked out of there and I said, okay, you know, now do, do the color version and basically do whatever you, you want to do. You, nobody ever let you do try something cool, but don't go like the expected sort of desaturated way. And, and he actually did a nice job. He did sort of. Uh, um, has, uh, I kind of, yeah, has, has nice tonality. And I was thinking, 
uh, it's just on a different thought, but I was thinking I should always light off a black and white monitor because uh, it really had a nice look and then just add the color later, you know, because you, you, you're working sort of in that black and white world. It was, it was fun working with that, that sort of just light and dark separation instead of color separation. And then, you know, turning the monitor over after you lit and looking at it in color again. So. Interesting. But I don't well, know if I'll actually do that, but I'm, you know, I'm going to try it. <laughs> well, um, as you already mentioned, tomorrow, I believe 11.30 to 2.30 at the gymnasium, you're doing a lighting workshop. Yeah. Everybody's invited to come. And thank you very much, Faden. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>